Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's so nice to see so many of our friends here today. Uh, my name is Ross Bridgman, and I am a member of the Board of Trustees of the Columbus Symphony Orchestra. On behalf of our board and our musicians, who have been diligently playing up there, <laughs> nothing like a little Mozart in the afternoon. Um, on behalf of all of us, welcome to the Ohio Theater. We are particularly happy today that you could join us for an announcement concerning the future of the Columbus Symphony Orchestra. Today, we are very proud to announce a new issue. Our initiative is We Are There For You, or We Are Here For You. It is an initiative which will last three years. It is designed to ensure that our wonderful, magnificent services are delivered to as many residents of Columbus and Central Ohio as possible. In particular, this initiative focuses on presently underserved populations in our community and on our children. Denise Regg is here today. Uh, she will give us details on the initiative uh, in her remarks. I just want to say that the Symphony family is ardently in the belief that music can be the source of inspiration, joy, and healing. Now, we are honored today to have many of our, some of our highly esteemed community partners, and they are going to discuss with us their feelings about the importance of music in our community, and they will share how we can partner as a symphony orchestra, a member of a community, and partners with many of our organizations in order to achieve the objective of this initiative. So enough of, from me. Uh, I want you all to welcome Brian Ross. He is the president and CEO of Columbus Experience. I had a, I had a uh, lapse right there. Yeah. Brian? Thank you, Ross. Appreciate that. Oh, it's up for the esteemed community leaders here. Um, I'll tell you what, I was just sharing with a few people walking in here. Uh, it is so nice to walk in and, and feel the energy, hear the music, uh, see a lot of uh, great people. Um, so it's, it's one of those things that's starting to come back slowly, but uh, our community, as I said, if any community can do it, we will, uh, as we welcome many visitors and residents back uh, to the Ohio Theater and with the uh, uh, symphony as well. But good afternoon. My name's Brian Ross, and I'm President and CEO of Experience Columbus. At Experience Columbus, we believe our city is built on bold ideas and fueled by the relentless optimism. The Columbus Symphony is dreaming big but also turning those lofty ideas into a reality to be experienced by local residents and visitors to our city from all walks of life. Our vision is centered on being the leading force in creating and revealing the best of the Columbus experience to the world. And I am thrilled that the Columbus Symphony is playing an instrumental role in creating unforgettable and exciting cultural opportunities that is putting Columbus on the map as a destination to live, work, and raise a family. The symphony has received an abundance of recognition at the national, regional, and local levels over the past year. The New Yorker called the Columbus Symphony worthy of note. You gotta love that. For its work to keep the livelihood in all full-time musicians and staff whole. A feat that most arts organizations across the country 
um, were unable to obtain. Most recently, the symphony received a nomination for a regional Emmy for its 2020 holiday spectacular programs that was broadcast on two television stations in the, in the past in December, reaching more central Ohioans than ever before and sharing the brightness of the holidays when our community needed it most. This is just one example of the remarkable ways that the symphony has continued to be there for our community through new and exciting ways. With Columbus as the 14th largest city and growing in our nation, the Columbus Symphony is an invaluable resource for our community to explore, discover, one of a kind cultural offerings that elevate our region and make music exciting, meaningful, and accessible. I am proud to watch the symphony use its unique assets to assist with the reemergence and healing of our community. Thank you. It's my pleasure now to introduce Donna Collins, Executive Director of the Ohio Arts Council. Good afternoon. Thank you, Brian. Wow, what a, what a nice afternoon. And the media is here. You know, we never know, right? And there they are in all their glory. I said to Denise, this is a special day. They're all here. And, and I believe that to be true as well as you do. And my role as the executive director of the Ohio Arts Council, it's my honor to support and encourage Ohio's artists and arts organizations. We hope and we believe and we dream and we have that optimism that you both talked about um, that we are a, a prospering and growing sector. As you must certainly know, the arts in Ohio makes our state more diverse, inclusive, and accessible. In fact, Governor DeWine and the legislature know the importance of the arts as it was evidenced when they provided a historic level of funding for the arts for fiscal year 22 and 23 through the Ohio Arts Council with a budget of $40 million. That's because our arts advocates are out telling their stories and talking about the good things that our artists and arts organizations are doing across this great state. I have to say, because of the, the arts profound economic impact, we've watched firsthand what's happened here at the CSO, their pioneering spirit it has propelled them as a major leader in our region's creative economy sector. I'm honored to be here today with Brian, Denise, Council President Hardin, and, and many of you. Well, I can't forget Ross Bridgman. He's on the board. We've got to take care of him. Um, to be with all of you to shine a light on the good things that are happening at the Columbus Symphony. Their continued leadership in the arts in this community, in the orchestral world, it's making a huge impact, not just through music, not just through the musicians. We know they're good. We know they're at the heart of what happens here. But it's the impact and the innovations over the past year and even before that have made this organization special. The symphony continues to advance the idea that in our great state, the arts matter. They matter to all of us. The CSO has been admiral, admirable stewards of the cultural capital and resources provided to them, always innovating around big ideas. You can't meet with Denise Reg without ha walking away with big ideas. There's always more to do, and somehow this board and this staff do more even in times when there's less. I hope all of you, like me, understand what a small and mighty team of people can accomplish when their heart, mission, and leadership align. In fact, with just 14, right, 14 full-time staff here, I think it's pretty amazing that they have doubled the number of children reached through music education programs in just two years and during a pandemic. The CSO was among the first to safely return to major live performances, such as bringing back the wildly popular, successful Picnic with the Pops, right here in Columbus at the, at the Commons. 
I join with thousands of people, not only in central Ohio, but those who travel here and say every opportunity is great. Um, I was here a month ago and had a fabulous time. Um, you can't help but smile and laugh and love when you see people dancing across the commons and enjoying each other's company as well as the special music they ha we all heard. The arts in Ohio are growing and prospering because of organizations like the symphony. The Ohio Arts Council is proud to invest in the Columbus Symphony who has taken to heart what it means to strengthen Ohio's communities culturally, educationally, and economically through the arts. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Lori, Lori, tell, tell it to me, Hamama, just like it's spelled, to, to share with you uh, some further inspiration. Good afternoon, everyone. I know it's, um, I don't know about you, but as soon as I walk in this lobby, I feel like my blood pressure drops about 15 points, and, and that, that I just have that moment of calm that I need in a, a rather chaotic day. But really, what an honor it is to be here today and to share all that the symphony is doing to be here for our community, including taking care of our businesses. I'm Dr. Lori Hamama, and I am the Senior Medical Director of Wellbeing at Ohio Health. And I've seen firsthand over the last 18 months the effects and collective trauma over this last, this last really difficult period. But I've also seen and experienced the incredible care and dedication of our healthcare workers, our healthcare staff, and all of our first responders in Columbus who continue to work every day to save lives here and in central Ohio. We need thriving employers in order to support the robust and vibrant industries across central Ohio. The symphony is committed to serving the organizations and individuals across our business community that make our region economically prosperous. They have committed to performing a minimum of 20 free small ensemble concerts in the coming season at the workplaces, at the workplaces of local businesses to positively contribute to the mental health and physical health and well-being of the employees. So just imagine your day <laughs> made so much better by music. The symphony will also offer the Mindful Music Moments program to businesses. This innovative program teaches mindfulness and stress reduction techniques to students in schools, and now it will be customized for adults in the workplace to start off the day providing four minutes of classical music with prompts for individuals to reflect on. And mindfulness has been a really important practice for me, um, my staff, all of our providers and associates uh, to, to, to really help us over this past year. And so over bringing these musical opportunities of respite are critical to meeting the mental health and wellness needs in the workplace. Over the past year, we have missed so many of our opportunities of regular happiness and joyfulness experiences um, and those collective moments of, of true shared experience, much like the live musical experiences. So I am so grateful, truly grateful, to the symphony's commitment to share the healing power of music and for creating a brighter future for everyone through the joy of music. So thank you. And it's my honor to introduce our next speaker. Please welcome Council President Shannon Hardin. Wow, it's always hard to follow someone like a healthcare hero. We are so grateful for you and all of your colleagues at Ohio Health and throughout our community who kept us safe and healthy through a very trying past 15 months. Um, thank you to Ms. Denise, my, my dear, dear friend, to Ross, to Brian, uh, to Ms. Donna uh, for having me here. It is really an exciting day in our city. There's a saying that has guided much of my time on council uh, policy programs and commitments to our community is that uh, if it's not for all, then it's not for us. Or put uh, another way, we are here for you. Uh, 
There's, uh, the Columbus Symphony is making great strides to serve local residents here in Columbus from every generation. They're working to make cultural programs accessible to all and using music to inspire our neighbors. We are here today because the symphony as a community asset is providing new ways to support our families, to be there for our neighborhoods, to be there for folks who didn't historically come to places like this. And they're here, they're, they're here for our children. The symphony is uplifting the idea that accessibility can create life-changing musical and cultural experiences in so many different ways. Partnerships with community-based organizations through the CSO CARES program and local schools are helping to meet the needs of enriching educational opportunities. Just last year, they created an online curriculum that reached out to every third grade student in the city of Columbus to meet the critical needs of arts education. By being there for our community, they are using music as a vehicle to unlock potential of, the, of our young people in our city. They are serving the elderly by bringing the joy of music into the residential communities. They're providing a healing uh, to our communities uh, for our, uh, our military veterans. They're breathing new life into our city as we heal from a difficult year after a global, a global public health crisis brought on by the pandemic and grappled with the realities of inequities in social justice. So my job is to say thank you. Thank you to the CSO for making resources available that unite and strengthen our city. And now it's my honor to introduce the executive director of the Columbus, Columbus Symphony, Ms. Denise Ragg. I have to say I love every one of you out there. I loved all the speakers and thank you for being here for us. Um, I want to thank you all for being here today, especially our media partners, who are too numerous for me to mention individually, but are listed here on this banner. You know, we met with the GMs of the community and talked to them about what we were trying to do, and unequivocally the response was, count us in, we're in. So thank you all for being here, and thank you for helping the community understand what we're doing. So the We Are Here For You campaign is the manifestation of the symphony's new mission of inspiring and building strong community through music. We will, over the course of the next three years, be here in ways we never have before to touch the lives of every community member, especially our children in Central Ohio. Our media partners are critical to that effort as they enable the word to be spread and to be known by everybody in every region. Um, so at any rate, um, all of our speakers, thank you to each and every one of you, touched upon the importance of music and arts to our community. Many of them have touched upon what we consider the most important value, which is truly the vision, inspiration, and joy we can bring to an increasingly complicated, difficult world filled with peoples whose lives need to be enhanced and brightened. So um, the goal of this plan is not to sell more tickets, but to serve the people and add vitality to this great city and region. Thus, for starters, in 21-22, you've already heard how we doubled the number of children even in the midst of COVID that we were serving. We are not nearly done. That was before we implemented a focus, intentional plan. So we will, starting this season, make all children 6 to 16 free in the Masterwork Hall. So if you're coming to a Masterwork concert and you've got children, I, I want to just for a second tell you what that really means. So it goes unknown by many people that you can buy a $10 ticket to the symphony. So two parents buy a $10 ticket each and they can bring five children, which has happened. We've seen it happen at the last concert we did before um, we shut down for this past season. It's not just about that experience. It's about the shared family experience that those developed and then the shared traditions for families for generations to come. It becomes the discussion of Thanksgiving tables two generations from now. Um, so we will also, veterans and active duty military can access free tickets to the Vet Tix Foundation and we will continue to make opportunities for free tickets available to the heroes of our community. Those on the front line, like Lori's talking about, taking care of us and keeping us safe. We'll continue to expand our free community concerts, which are performed free in city parks and other locations to reach people in their neighborhoods, targeting underserved groups and creating new paths of accessibility. 
we'll ensure inclusion of all our children through, just for starters, one, our free online programs, the third grade program that um, Council President um, Hardin mentioned is a free program. We, expend, we expect to expand that further than the, just the Columbus City Schools, but that's significant in and of itself. All Title I schools will be free for the school day programs next year and probably into the next couple of years, all of them. Donna, I love it that you just gasped, thank you. Um, and we're going to increase the number of schools that we go to directly from the traditional 10 to 12 that we normally do to 18 this year and on into the future, we'll expand it more and more. So those are just a few examples. The Columbus community has been here for the symphony and we're gonna repay that generosity and kindness by being here for our community. So we aim to become the exemplar nationally of how a, a symphony can serve its community. We boldly profess to believing that we can and will create a new and successful model for American symphonies. The We Are Here campaign will change lives on and off the stage. Working together with all of you here and our partners and friends across the region, we will help to create an even brighter future for our community and everyone living in it. As we enter this historic endeavor together, we wanna thank you all for being here with us. So we are done with the speaking portion, but I cannot tell you all how much I appreciate it. I cannot even fathom how we've gotten all the media here. We met with the GMs, like I said, they said they were in, and by golly, you guys are in. So thank you so, so much. Um, I'm gonna do something we don't normally do since there seems to be enough enthusiasm and enough media people to actually do this. We're gonna allow people to lobby questions at us. If there aren't any, we will break up and you can get interviews particularly. But are there any questions people would, would like to ask? Okay, thank you for that question. So the community should know that the symphony is 65% dependent on donations. That's not an unusual model for symphonies, but during COVID something really amazing happened for the symphony. The community was so supportive, we are using those funds as the basis for this program moving forward. And hopefully through the program, while it's not for selling tickets, right, hopefully it will continue to generate contributed income as well that we can keep putting into the system so that we can reach more and more people um, free of charge despite the fact that uh, we won't be selling the tickets. That is ultimately the goal, right? That's why we've asked the media to join us. We've asked them to join us from a very altruistic perspective of wanting to be there for the community. Our donor base is amazing. And, and, and truthfully, I expect it, that they, they have all been very supportive. The ones we've spoken to have been very supportive of this initiative. So the funding is coming primarily of course, we do not get me wrong, we get plenty of public funding from a variety of sources. But, um, but we really intend to do this on the backs of the people in the community who agree with us philosophically that we should be here for everybody. Any other questions? Well, then I just have one thing to say. You all need to stay long enough to eat all those sandwiches. <laughs> we just got done with Picnic with the Pops and had a, a refrigerator every weekend stuffed full of food, so I don't want any more food in the refrigerator. Eat it, take it with you. We'll be hanging around the speakers. We'll all stay for a while if you want to do interviews. But thank you again for all coming out, and we look forward to seeing you throughout the next three years as we work to be here more and more and more for our community. Thank you.